Hi, I'm going to talk to you about the three rivers in urban Canberra. The first river flows from Yass River outside of Canberra, comes all the way in, flows under the highway that you follow in. Then it comes into Northbourne Avenue, flows under Northbourne Avenue, flows all the way down until it reached the Malongla River. As the Malongla River flows along the, the waterways here, which is what we now call Lake Burley Griffin. It flowed freely all the way down towards and linked up with the Murrumbidgee River. Our people camped along what we call the Malongla River or Lake Burley Griffin. They camped in droves up at Regatta Point. Regatta Point was a nice area. You could call it a camp area and fished and swum and played. They also camped up at Old Parliament House where they could just walk down to the river. They also camped up at New Parliament House, which was a nice high rise when the water, you know, the rain came and the water flowed through and flooded through. But they also camped up there in the seasonal changes, waiting for the bogan moss to fly over. As we reached the early 1900s, there was a competition for the refurbishment, if you want to call it, of the Malonglo River. It was a worldwide competition that they put out. The successful applicant, Walter Burley Griffin, put in a submission for this master plan to refurbish the Malonglo River in now what we call Lake Burley Griffin. Lake Burley Griffin was for non-Indigenous people only. The Ngunnawal people were forced off the Malonglo River and moved to Yass. They could no longer do their practices, their traditional practices of fishing, hunting and gathering. There was 10 missions set up in Yass for the Ngunnawal people and surrounding tribes to be kept on those missions and not coming back. If we take a look at the aqua that, that I designed, of the three rivers that we talked about. The Northbourne Avenue River, the water that flows under Northbourne Avenue, flows freely all the way up Northbourne Avenue until it met the Malonglo River, which now we call Lake Burley Griffin. At Lake Burley Griffin, like I said, or Malonglo River, it free flowed all the way down. And if you look at the top of the artwork, we can see that water line flowing down. Then it goes out of, out of picture. That's the water flow that goes all the way down. Then on the right hand side, we have the Murrumbidgee River. The reason I painted this painting was to pass on the traditional story of our mum's country, the Ngunnawal people. Each day, it's a reminder of how beautiful and vibrant Ngunnawal country and how important it is us to look after our country. Now I thought we could go on a walk together. A walk along the pathway that leads us to what we call ochre. Let's go for a walk to the ochre ground. Welcome to the ochre ground. We are at Goobadurra. I'm going to talk to you about some items that you might find in your backyard. You might even find them in your freight yard or even at your local park that you might walk past every single day. My first item I'm going to talk to you about is this little item here. The English name for it is the bull roarer. Maybe you can find out the traditional name for it. Now the bull roarer was used to send a message, no different than what our mobile phone does. How does it do it? You actually find it and carve it out of a tree. It could be a branch, it could be a tree root. I'll let you decide. With the bull roarer, what we did was we tied reeds or stringy bark through it. 
shaped it out so it can pull air in and push it out. I'll give you a little example. First, we have to make the, the string nice and tight. Then we release it. And it spins around. As you can see, the sound, the, the air or wind comes in and gets pushed out. Now we would go to a high area and we'd also use the wind. So we'd roll this around, making that big sound and letting the wind push it. As I said before, no different than sending an SMS. Once you hear it, you knew exactly what was going on. So the next items we're gonna look at are two very important items in our culture. One is this big thing we call a coolerman. Now the coolerman used for many purposes. Purposes like food, putting food on it, no different than a dinner table, or carrying it somewhere to collect food. The second, you might use it for a baby crib, you know, putting lots of feathers down on it and then laying the baby on it. The second item is the stone tools. This is what we carve things out of. This is what we cut things with. Now let's have a look at a few of the stone tools. And this is what I was talking before about, you know, might be in your front yard, might be in your backyard, might be at the local park, because where these stone tools come from, it's actually at one of the local parks. Let's take a look at this one, for example. Notice the long tip on it. What would it be used for? I would say this would go on an end of a spear for a spear tip. Now, it just doesn't go on like this. You take it to a grinding groove area, which is a nice stone area where they sharpen these up. The end of a spear. We have these other two items as well. Very thin, but very sharp. You could use them for a cutting. Lots of different cuttings. Maybe like our kangaroo skins, our possum skins of the animals. Now, if we take a look at the edges of them, imagine taking these to a grinding groove area and sharpening these right up. Two more stone tools. No different than the knives we use today. Again, in your backyards. Oh wow, after looking at those artifacts, it has a deep, rich history of what's actually on this land. Makes you wanna get out and look at the land. Look at what's there, what's below your houses, what's below the concrete. So much rich Ngunnawal history that we can look at. Thank <laughs> you.